Asthma is a chronic inflammatory disorder of the airways that causes recurrent episodes of wheezing, shortness of breath, chest tightness, and cough. Hallmarks of the disease are intermittent and reversible airway obstruction. Chronic bronchial inflammation with marked eosinophilia. Bronchial smooth muscle cell hypertrophy and hyperreactivity. And increased mucus accretion. First let's discuss about the pathogenesis of asthma. The major etiologic factors of asthma are genetic predisposition to type 1 hypersensitivity, also known as atopy, acute and chronic airway inflammation, and bronchial hyperresponsiveness to a variety of external stimuli. These stimuli may vary among individuals and may not trigger the disease in every individual. Common ones are cat and dog fur, cockroaches, pollens of various grasses and trees, respiratory infections, especially viral infections, smoke and cold air, stress, and exercise. As I said before, development of the hypersensitivity in asthma is genetically determined. When an allergen, like a pollen or something reaches the airways, it is engulfed by dendritic cells located in the mucous lining of the airways. Then this dendritic cell will process the foreign antigens and present them to a naive CD4 positive T helper cell. This antigen presentation will result in activation of the T helper cell. This activated T helper cell then secretes interleukin-5, which increases the development and activation of eosinophils. Interleukin-13, which increases the mucus accretion. And interleukin-4, which increases the synthesis of IgE antibodies. These IgE antibodies are the principal mediators responsible for the pathogenesis of asthma. IgE antibodies have a region called FC portion, which acts as a ligand to bind onto the surface receptors on mast cells. These IgE-bound mast cells reside within the submucosa of the respiratory tract. With subsequent exposure to the allergen, these mast cell-bound IgE will bind to those allergens. This will activate intracellular signaling pathways and trigger the release of preformed mediators into the submucosa by the mast cell. The major substances are histamine, proteases, and chemotactic factors like eosinophil chemotactic factor and neutrophil chemotactic factor. In addition to the release of granular content, binding of allergens to the IgE will increase the production of arachidonic acid from membrane phospholipids. This arachidonic acid will then be converted into prostaglandin D2 and leukotriene B4, C4, and D4 ultimately. These substances will induce two types of reactions within the airways. The immediate hypersensitivity reaction and late phase reaction. Immediate reaction consists of the following bronchoconstriction, mediated by histamines, leukotriene C4 and D4, prostaglandin D2, and direct stimulation of vagal receptors located in the airways. Increased mucus production, mediated by histamine, and prostaglandin D2. Visodilation and increased vascular permeability, mediated by histamine, and leukotriene C4 and D4. Tissue damage, which is caused by proteases. Recruitment of leukocytes, mediated by cytokines like tumor necrosis factor and interleukin-1 and chemokines. Late phase reaction consists of chronic inflammation, which is characterized by edema and eosinophil-rich mixed inflammatory infiltration. The inflammatory mediators will sustain the inflammation even without further exposure to allergens. This inflammation and bronchial hyperresponsiveness are the major causes for persisting signs and symptoms. Therefore, controlling of the late phase reaction with inhaled steroids is mandatory in the management of asthma. Morphological features of the airways in an asthmatic patient include the following. There is increased mucus in the airways. Sometimes, the smaller airways may be blocked by mucus plugs. Microscopically, abundant eosinophils and eosinophil-derived substances like Kirschman spirals and charcot laden crystals can be seen in the airways, as well as in sputum samples. Surface epithelium will have increased numbers of goblet cells and thickened basement membranes. Bronchial wall will show smooth muscle hypertrophy and hyperplasia, along with mucous gland hyperplasia. The vascularity of the walls increases to drive more white blood cells to the site. And with time, some areas may undergo fibrosis due to chronic inflammation. These changes occurring in the airways are collectively known as airway remodeling. Here is an image from the Robbins textbook of pathology, showing a part of a normal airway. This image shows the airway of an asthmatic patient. See there is a thick mucus layer on top of the respiratory epithelium. And there are eosinophils in mucus. Number of mucus glands have been increased to secrete more mucus. The thickness of basement membrane is also increased. 
lamina propria is flooded with large numbers of neutrophils, and there are more blood vessels. Number of smooth muscle cells are increased, and they look hypertrophic. The number of glands within the submucosa is also increased. Now, some types of asthma may follow the above description of classic asthma, and some types may not. Atopic asthma is the classic example for IgE-mediated type 1 hypersensitivity reaction which we have discussed earlier. It is the most common type and usually begins in childhood. And these patients always have a positive family history of asthma. In non-atopic asthma, which is usually not very common, the serum IgE levels are quite normal. And they usually do not have a positive family history of asthma. This type of asthma usually begins in adulthood. And it is more severe and persistent compared to the atopic type. However, the morphology of airways is quite similar to atopic asthma. Rarely, some drugs may trigger asthma in certain individuals. The classic example is aspirin-induced asthma. These patients usually have other conditions like recurrent episodes of rhinitis and nasal polyps and urticaria with concomitant bronchospasms. Occupational asthma is stimulated by fumes, like epoxy resins and plastics. Organic and chemical dusts, like wood and cotton. And gases, like toluene. Repeated exposure to these substances will trigger intense bronchospasms within these individuals. We have already came across the clinical features of asthma in previous slides, let's recall them quickly. A classic asthmatic attack usually lasts one to several hours. These people usually present with wheezing, cough with or without sputum production, chest tightness, and shortness of breath. There is a more severe condition called status asthmaticus, in which the paroxysm persists for days and even weeks. There is a high degree of airway obstruction, which may manifest as cyanosis or even death. The diagnosis is based on demonstration of an airway obstruction, difficulty with exhalation, which is characterized by prolonged expiration and wheezing, peripheral blood eosinophilia, and eosinophil-derived substances like Kirschman spirals and charcot-laden crystals in sputum. As asthma is an obstructive airway disease, in spirometry the forced expiratory volume during the first second, or FEV1, and FEV1 to forced vital capacity ratio, will be decreased. Treatment includes two steps. Immediate management is aimed at relieving signs and symptoms of the patients. Usually given drugs are short-acting beta-2 agonists like salbutamol, short-acting muscarinic receptor antagonists like ipratropium, and intravenous methylxanthines like aminophilin. All of these drugs will cause bronchial smooth muscle relaxation and dilate the airways. In addition to that, aminophilin has an anti-inflammatory action as well. Long-term management is aimed at reducing chronic inflammatory reaction involving the airways. For that, patients are usually given glucocorticoids like beclomethacin, prednisolone, and hydrocortisone, and diophilin.